Hey guys, welcome back to Two Friends in a Bible. I'm Barbie and this is Flora. We actually came on today Hello. to do a quick video on something that we think is um, very, very um, interesting, important, nice, amazing, mm -hmm. awesome, you know, just a little mm -hmm. everything. And being that this is um, the week of um, Paso, I mean, um, you know, we had um, Palm Sunday and then we've got Good Friday and all that coming up. We decided to go ahead and do this. And with, you know, with Sunday being Easter. So we're, we're happy you joined us today. And um, we're going to look at this in a different and a much different perspective than what you may or may not have heard. And um, it's called the, the Folded Napkin. Don't know if you guys have heard that, but it is really just amazing. I never heard of it until last year, and um, it is just such an awesome story. But we're go um, we're going to get started on it, and we're going to start with John chapter one, twenty verses one through seven, and I'm going to read that for you real quick. The first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene early, when it was yet dark, unto the sepulchre. And seeketh the stone taken away from the set poultry. Is that how you pronounce that? Then she uh, runneth. It's, close it's the grave. <laughs> then she runneth and cometh to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and said unto them, They have taken away the Lord out of the set poultry, the tomb, and we know not where they have laid him. Peter therefore went forth. And, and that other disciple and came to the tomb. So they were, they ran both together and the other disciple did outrun Peter and came first to the tomb. And that other disciple is believed to be John. And um, the reason they believe he was the youngest apostle is because he was able to outrun, which means he was younger. Plus he was the last one that died. Just a little mm. trivia information. And he, okay, going back to verse five, and he stooping down and looking in, saw the linen clothes lying, yet when he went not in. Then cometh Simon Peter following him and went into the tomb and see if the linen clothes lie. And the napkin that was about his head, not lying with the linen clothes, but wrapped together in a place by itself. This scripture has been read thousands of times around the world um people have quoted it they've read it they've acted on it so what's the big deal i mean what's the big deal that jesus left his clothes and napkin laying there um so we're gonna so let's go back and look at verses six and seven the folded napkin verse six then simon peter who was behind him and right arrived and went into the tomb he saw the strips of linen lying there as well as the burial cloth that bit, had been around Jesus' head. The cloth was folded up by itself, self separate from the linen. Mm -hmm. And Barbie, um, the Bible tells us that the napkin, which was placed over the face of Jesus, was not just thrown aside like the grave clothes. The Bible takes an entire verse to tell us that the napkin was neatly folded and was placed at the head of the tomb. Is that important? And if so, then why? What was Jesus trying to tell us? It was all laying there, folded up in his tomb. In order to understand the significance of the folded napkin, you have to understand a little bit about Hebrew traditions of that day. The folded napkin had to do with the master and servant, and every Jewish boy knew this tradition. When the servant set the dinner table for the master, he made sure that it was exactly the way the master wanted it. The table was furnished perfectly, and the servant would wait just out of sight until the master had finished eating. The servant would not dare touch that table until the master was finished. Now, if the master were done eating, he would rise from the table, wipe his fingers, his mouth, clean his beard, and then he would wad up that napkin and toss it onto the table. The servant would then know it's okay to clear the table. For in those days, the wadded napkin meant I'm done. But if the master got up from the table and folded his napkin and laid it beside his plate, the servant would not dare touch the table because, and this is important, 
the folded napkin meant I'm coming back. John 14, 3, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. When Jesus comes again and receives us unto him, there where he is, there where we may also, I'm sorry, there we may be also, he's, he's talking about heaven and the new earth. There will be no more pain, sorrow, sickness, death, tears, crying, hunger, thirst, darkness, sin, deceivers, condemnation, persecution, or separation. And the most important thing is that we will be face to face with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Powerful stuff. <laughs> It really, really is. You know, um, do you know that, him? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. I think we're having some internet issues because we're doing a delay. So y'all just um, bear with us. Um, apparently someone doesn't like this story getting out. We forgot to pray before <laughs> we started to keep him out of our airwaves. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, see if you can go. It looks like you're back. So see if you can keep okay. going. All right. Um. We just want to ask, do you know Jesus? Um, Jesus isn't in the tomb, so where could he really be? Where is Jesus? Where is our Lord? Where is my Savior? He's right here. He's with you. Um, don't you feel him? He's always been here among us. He's with you, even if you haven't accepted him. You're his child. Um, don't you feel his awesome presence? Do you want to find Jesus? Jesus is my savior. He's Barbie's savior. And he can be yours too. Because he died for our sins and he rose again. And when he did, he folded that napkin and laid it neatly in the tomb, telling us he is coming again. And me and Barbie both believe it's going to be soon. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, and the fact that he left that clue for us because... That is, was a big tradition in Jewish customs and the apostles, um, I don't know if Mary Magdalene was, um, Jewish or not. I think she was, but, but regardless, they would have understood mm -hmm. what exactly that meant. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I mean, mm, mm -mm. yeah, the fact they, that an entire Bible verse focuses on that. And how many times have we read it in the past and never picked up on it? Um, well, that's the it was importance there of reason. understanding Jewish customs. No, mm -hmm. we don't celebrate them. No, we don't do them. But understanding them so that you can understand why Jesus did this. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, he's just like, yep. look, I'm Let's not here. understand the Bible even more. Yeah. And he's like, mm -hmm. look, I'm not here in the tomb anymore. I'm gone. But don't worry. I'm coming back. I'm coming mm -hmm. back. And it's just, yep. ah, I mean, just something mm -hmm. as little as a napkin. Because, you know, on the Jewish times, you know, they would wrap them all up in embalming stuff. And then they would mm -hmm. lay that napkin on their face. Yep. And yeah, awesome deal. Keep You want to keep going? Got a little bit more? Sure. Mm -hmm. um, Jesus is my healer. The stripes he took on his back took care of all sickness. Do you need a healer? Jesus is also my deliverer. He delivers every one of their sins if they believe and accept him in their heart. Have you asked him in, in your heart? He delivers from depression, drugs, gambling, adultery, lying, alcohol, every type of sin. Um, have you ever thought he'll never forgive me? I've done too much. I think we're all guilty of that. I know I used to think that before. I rededicated my life back to him. He will forgive you. Um, Jesus is my forgiver. He forgives sin. He forgives what we can't let go of. He forgives what we can't stop thinking about. He forgives any sin, no matter how horrible it is. Jesus forgives. Jesus is my refuge. He's there when I need someone to talk to. And he's there when I need a friend. Mm -hmm. he's my savior and, and barbie i'll let you kind of comment on this too he's my savior but he is a friend 
-hmm. any time of the day I can be driving. I can be laying in the bed. I can be in the shower. I can talk to Jesus anytime I want to, and I can feel his presence. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he, he's my closest friend, but he's my savior. You know, I definitely respect him and honor him as that, but he's, you feel him, you know, he's there with you and you're his child. He takes care of you. I can't tell you how many times he's helped me, mm. you know, you know, times that he's helped that I didn't even realize he was helping until years later. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, yep. so yeah, many times. I know you know, I've heard that expression. I thank God for unanswered prayers. You know, sometimes we question, well, why didn't he answer that prayer? Well, mm -hmm. if he'd answered that prayer, we might not be sitting here today. Mm -hmm. God knows what's best for us. Mm -hmm. Um, and you got to remember that too, but he's always, he's always there. You can always feel the precious Holy Spirit all over you. Mm -hmm. um, and that's Jesus, mm -hmm. you know. And Barbie, I think you're up next. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so guess what, guys? Religion is not going to help you. Yep, religion will definitely not help you. You might be listening to us today on this video and call yourself a Pentecostal, a Baptist, a Catholic, Assembly of God, Presbyterian, or any other type of denomination. <laughs> That's all good. But what we want to know is, have you found religion or have you found Jesus? Which one is it? There's a huge difference. Jesus is a relationship, one-on-one with you. You, 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 just yourself. You are his child. He loves you. He died for you to forgive you of every sin. He rose again and he is coming again very, very soon. Don't delay. Yeah, time is short. Easter Sunday is not about anything else except remembering the greatest gift we can ever receive. And that is Jesus. Yeah, and it's, and it's, it's free. It doesn't cost anything. It's free. He's everything you are ever going to need. His gift is so easy to receive. If he, if you believe that he died for you and rose again from the dead, that he is the son of God, our Messiah, then say this prayer. Lord Jesus, I repent of my sins and want to turn away from future sins and surrender my life to you. Wash me clean and help me. I know I'm not perfect, but I want to be redeemed and start a new life with leading with you leading my steps. I believe you are the son of God. You died on the cross for my sins and rose again on the third day for my victory. I believe that in my heart and make confession with my mouth that you, Jesus, is my savior and Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Fill me with your precious Holy Spirit. Amen. That's mm -hmm. all. You just have to, that, you say the prayer and you have to believe, you know. It's that God, simple, guys. Yep, it's through, you know, you your salvation is through grace by faith. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you have to, you know, God gave us the grace in G, by sending Jesus and we have to have faith that he is the son of God and that he died for your sins. Yep. Yeah. So, and nobody could have probably have many more sins than I've had in my past. So, yeah. Same here. Mm. And I want to add to this, you know, you've got to believe and you've got to accept him. But I'm just telling you, it will be the most important decision you ever make in your life. You'll see an instant difference once you ask Jesus in your heart. You're just mm -hmm. going to feel like everything's lifted off of you. All those sins you're feeling guilty about. Um, addiction, alcoholism, things like that. Jesus will help you put that down and he's going to help you get things right. Um, I know Barbie probably hears it a lot too. I, I hear people all the time. He'll never forgive me. I've done too much wrong, but he will. Um, no, he'll be he there will. standing there with his arms open. Mm -hmm. Run know. to him. Mm -hmm. You yeah. will not. You will not get struck down, I promise. Yep. I know a lot of us joke around and say, oh, Lord, if I was to go to church again, I'd get struck by lightning. No, no, you won't. He'll be standing there with his arms open wide saying, mm -hmm. welcome back, welcome back. Mm -hmm. And he, but he will never force it on you either. No, nope. it's your decision. It's got to be free will. You've got to, you've got to choose to accept him. Yeah. 
Yeah. And why wouldn't you? Mm-hmm. You know, I, I know we have people sometimes that, that turn away or they just don't believe, but if you've got that in the back of your mind, wondering that's the Holy spirit trying to, trying to get you, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. In a good way. Mm-hmm. Don't ignore that. Um, Jesus wants you to come to him. Um, I know we, we do a lot of videos like this, but guys, time is short. We need everybody to be spreading the word of, of Jesus. Um, it's such a precious gift. And and like I said, I don't know why anybody would turn it, turn away from, from it. Um, but get the word out. Now, Barbie, I'm sorry. I keep talking. <laughs> oh, you're fine. And you know, if your heart's, if your heart's hardened because you've had bad things happen in your life and, you know, and your heart is hard and just ask, you know, just ask the Lord to soften your mm-hmm. heart. You know, it's one thing I try to, I do pray a lot about is because I could have a hard heart sometimes and I have to be really careful with it um, so that it don't get too hard. Um, you know, but sometimes, you know, when you've had things in your past and you've gone through things, it can happen. And so every time I start noticing that that might be what's going on, I, I pray and I just ask Jesus, you know, please give me your heart, give me Mm -hmm. your heart, you know, and, um, and he will, because nobody has a bigger heart than he does. Yep. Well, thank you guys so much for being with us today and happy resurrection day. Mm -hmm. And even if, you know, that's, I know that we have found that it wasn't truthfully a Friday to Sunday situation. It was more like a Wednesday to Saturday, but it's still when we celebrate it. So mm-hmm. celebrate his resurrection. It's a great time to tell friends and family about what happened. Mm-hmm. You know, this is what happened. And this is why it happened and why Jesus had to die, you know. Mm-hmm. And so, but spend, you know, make sure you spend extra time with Jesus and just praise him and thank him for leaving that neatly folded napkin. Let us mm-hmm. know, letting us know that he is coming again and very soon. Yep. And Barbie, real quick, if I could add, if you said that prayer that Barbie gave you the sample that you could use, um, you know, read your Bible. That's very important. Prayer is so important um, so that you grow that closeness to Jesus. Find some um, people you can fellowship with who are also Christians and they can help with questions you may have. Feel free to email us. We'll be glad to help as well if you have questions. Um, and I just wanted to put that out there. If you're, mm-hmm. if you've just said that prayer, you need to grow that relationship with Jesus. The more you talk to Him, the more you read that Bible, you'll just feel more and more closer to Him every day. And as soon as you accept Christ, Holy Spirit comes on in, and mm-hmm. you can just ask Him to teach you. Yeah, it's His mm-hmm. job to teach, and you. He will. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you know. If you've got sin, you know, in your life and and you already are a believer, but you've got sin in your life and you haven't repented of it, ask the Holy Spirit to show Mm -hmm. you, ask the Lord, you know, ask God to show you all the sins you have not repented of. Um, Because just because you accept Christ and you become a believer, yes, all past sins and future sins are forgiven, but you do have to ask. Um, yeah. for your sins to be forgiven. And I promise you, you if you were like me, you're going to be busy for a while repenting. Because mm-hmm. I asked, that was the one thing I asked him to do was bring to my memory remembrance of any sin that I had not repented of. And man, some of the stuff that came to mm-hmm. my memory was like, whoa. You know, where did that come from? That was me too. <laughs> yeah, I was like, where did that come from? Oh my goodness, I forgot about that. And, you know, I would be able to pray and ask, you know, for forgiveness. And the more you do that, the less you are likely to see. And you're going to still see him, but it gets less and less and less mm-hmm. and less. And yep. thank God for Jesus, you know, mm-hmm. that he's there to fix it, fix it when we goof. Mm-hmm. You just got to ask I him do. to do it. He doesn't force himself. So, yep. all right, guys. Well, thank y'all. And we will see you thank later. You. Bye-bye. Easter.